Hi guys, welcome to the today's session of design uh, analysis of algorithms. In this session, we are going to discuss about uh, one more application of uh, transform and conquer algorithm design technique, which is nothing but uh, Horner's rule. Right. So here we are going to know what is Horner's rule, how uh, we can solve a polynomial using Horner's rule. Now we are Horner's rule is a technique used in both mathematics and computer science to efficiently evaluate the polynomials. So it is named after the British mathematician W.G. Horner, who published it in the early 19th century. So here, uh, the scientist Horner uh, published this Horner rule in the 19th century. So after his uh, 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 development of uh, Horner's rule, uh, this uh, rule is named as Horner's rule. So it is particularly used in the context of uh, transform and conquer algorithms. It is particularly used in the context of transform and conquer algorithms. It is a strategy that involves transforming a problem into a simpler and simpler problems, then solving recursively. So here it, it goes for transforming the given problem into similar, simpler problem. And these simpler problems are recursively uh, after that the simplicity is recursively applied and those problems are solved after getting the solutions so solutions are combined uh, to get the solution of given problem this is to be called as Horner's rule now here let us see how generally a polynomial is evaluated now let us take that this is the polynomial in given so here the polynomial p of x is represented as a n x power n plus a n minus 1 x power n minus 1 plus 1 a1x plus a0. So here, an, an minus 1, x1, a0, a, a1, a0, all those are to be called as coefficients and x is a variable. Now here, we need to evaluate this polynomial for a specific value of x. Okay, that value is a constant value, which is nothing but c. Now, uh, generally, how to evaluate this means, uh, we will simplify the polynomial and we substitute x value and then we find the value. Now, how this polynomial can be simplified? The process of simplifying this polynomial is taking x as the common, right? How we can take x as the common? First, when I, how, how I can represent this polynomial means, first we need to represent a naught plus so here from all these terms we should take x as the uh, common then i'll get a1 plus i'll get a2x plus so on i'll get a n minus 1 into x power n minus 2 plus a n into x power n minus 1 so this i'll get Right. So here I taken 1x as the common. So that's why it is xn minus 1. Now after that, in the second step, how I am going to do it, x into a1 plus, so here again I am taking one more x as the common. And here I get a2 plus, so on, a n minus 1 into x power n minus 3 plus a n into x power n minus 2 right and this process is to be continued right so here you can see an example for that uh, 2 2 x power 4 minus x cube plus 3 x square plus x minus 5 is the polynomial that we given right so first i am going to take x from these right when i am taking x common from these i will get 2 x cube minus x square plus 3 x plus 1 so here constant of minus 5 is there so x into now, in this again, I am going to take x as the common. Then it becomes 2x square minus x plus 3 plus 1. Here, 1 is a constant term and 5 is also a constant term. Again, I am going to take x into x into. Here, again, from this, I am going to take x as the common. I will get 2x minus 1 plus 3 as the constant term. Right. Now, I transform it into uh, a single uh, ordered polynomial. A single ordered polynomial. Now, how it can be solved? How it can be solved. So suppose for example, if I want to solve this equation for x is equal to 3, a constant, how it can be solved means first I will find this value that is 2 into 3 minus 1. It is nothing but 6 minus 1, which is 5, right? 5. 
Now, x into 5. What is x into 5? Here x is 3, which is nothing but 3 into 5, 15. That should be added to 3. So, which becomes 18. Right. Now, 18 into, here I have one more 3. 18 into 3. So, what becomes this 18 into 3? 54. Here, plus 1 is there, which is nothing but 55 I get. That 55 into, again, I have one more 3. That is 3 into 55. Uh, sorry, 54, uh, uh, 3 into 55 minus 5 I have. So, when I did all this calculation, I will get uh, 5 in, 3 into 55 is 165 minus 5, which I will get its value as 160, right? So, by substituting x value, I can simplify this. I can get the solution for this equation, right? But this is the general procedure. So, when I use the Horner's rule, Horner's algorithm, we can reduce the time complexity of solving this equation. So, how this can be solved and how can we can reduce the problem. Right. Let us see the problem. Uh, here, this is the Horner's rule. Horner's rule of polynomial of n to 0, comma x. So, here x is the a constant value. P n to 0 are the array of coefficients. Now, initially, we'll take k is equal to p of n. k is the value that I want to store the final result. So, k is equal to initially I am taking p of n. For i is equal to n minus 1 to 0, I need to repeat this step. So k value is to be updated. Finally, I am returning k value. Right. Now, how this can be represented? Now, first initially I need to find p of n. So, what is p of n? It is an array of coefficients. What are the coefficients that I have? 2 is the coefficient. Here, since there is no any value, I can take minus 1 as the coefficient and 3, 1 and finally I have minus 5. Right. This is the uh, 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 this is the uh, array of uh, coefficients that I have from the given polynomial, right? Now, here I represented those arrows. Now, first initially, k is equal to p of n, which is nothing but p of this value, right? Now, 4, that is, here I will get k is equal to 2. So, for which value of x we are solving, x is equal to 3. So, initially, k equal to 2 x is equal to 3. Now, first, for the first iteration, I need to solve this one. k is equal to 3 into, so what is initial k? 2, 3 into 3 plus, so what is the next value that I have? p of i value. Next, what is p of i? p of n minus 1. What is p of n minus 1? Minus 1. That is plus minus 1. 3 into 2 plus minus 1. It is nothing but 5 i get. Right. Now, k value is updated as 5. Next, what I need to do? 3 into, now k value is 5 plus p of 3 already completed. So, p of 2. What is p of 2? It is 3. Right? 3. Which I will get it as 18. Next. So, now k contains 18. So, for the next value, what I need to do? 3 into 18 plus, what is the next coefficient? 1. So, which I will get it as 55. So, next, for the next, in the next iteration, I will get 3 into 55 plus, what is P of i here? The last value, what is left? This is nothing but minus 5, so which I will get as 160. Like this, I can solve the problem. So, here simply, I can show you how it is solved. Here, we are writing the coefficients in the order. First, we, we, we are taking the first coefficient as it is. Then what I am making is the value of x is multiplied with its previous coefficient and added with the current coefficient. Now I will get it is the value of this previous coefficient is multiplied with current uh, uh, the value of x is multiplied with previous coefficient and the current coefficient is added. Now I will get this one. The value of uh, this one is multiplied with the x. The value of previous coefficient is multiplied with the x and the current coefficient is added. So, like that, if we continue the procedure till all the coefficients are completed, I can solve the problem. So, I hope that you all understood how Horner's uh, algorithm solves uh, the polynomial uh, evaluation process in a simple way, which reduces the time complexity. So, one more small uh, topic that I am going to explain you is problem reduction. So, here, what is meant by problem reduction? So, which is a technique used in transform and conquer technique. 
the idea behind this problem reduction is to transform the given problem into an another problem that is very easy to solve. So here, this can be done the, by transforming the problem into another form or by using a heuristic to find a solution. Right. Now, uh, transform and uh, uh, conquer algorithm definitely when when I transform the problem into a smallest problem, definitely it reduces the size of the problem. So that's why we are saying that it is reducing the size. That is problem reduction is done. Right. Now, let us say an example. For example, consider the problem of finding the shortest path between two nodes in a graph. Right. In the, let, let us say the, the, the two nodes in a graph are A and B. I want to find the shortest path of these two nodes in the graph. One way to solve this problem is to reduce it to the problem of finding the shortest path between two nodes in a tree. Now, instead of, now here, this is the graph what I have. Now, I am going to convert this graph into a tree. And then I am going to find the distance of those two nodes in the tree. Okay, by finding the minimum cost spanning tree. So, I we, we already uh, discussed about uh, minimum cost, uh, or we are coming to know about minimum cost. Uh, sorry, we already discussed about minimum cost spanning trees, which are solved using the uh, Prim's algorithm and Crystal's algorithm. So, by that, we can saw, we can find the minimum cost spanning tree and we can uh, find the shortest path between the nodes. Right. Now, we are going to see one more example related to this uh, uh, problem reduction. Uh, that example is nothing but calculating the LCM of two numbers. So, here LCM is nothing but least common multiple uh, of two numbers X and Y. So, in a general approach, so how we are going to follow to solve the problem. So, let us say X is the bigger element. So, out of the given two elements, X is the bigger element. So let us say, now we need to reiterate, iterate uh, the process through the multiples of X. So, first I need to find the multiples of X. And if the first multiple, so first I consider the first multiple. If the first multiple is also a multiple of Y, return this as the answer. So, if it is, if itself is the first multiple itself uh, multiplies by, then that becomes the answer. Otherwise, continue the transaction. Suppose, for example, so here I have uh, considered 12 and 13. Now, what are the multiples of 12 and uh, 15? Let us say uh, 12 and 15. What are the multiples of 12? So, here 12 multiples are 3, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 15 multiples are. Uh, 3, 5, I have. Right. Now, first we need to take the bigger element. The bigger element is 15. So, that's why its multiples are 3 and 5. First, I will write 3. If 3 is multiplied by, then I can return its answer. Yes, 3 also multiplies by. That's why we return this answer. Suppose, for example, this is 13, let us say. This is 13, let us say. Now, or otherwise, let us say it is 14. Right. The multiples are 2 and 7 only for 14. Right. Now I am taking first 3. 3 is not a multiple of 14. Then we need to continue the transaction. Consider the next multiple, 5. This is also not uh, a multiple of 5, uh, 14. So that's why we not consider this one. We need to continue the transaction. But here there is no another multiple for 15 for continuing the transaction. So there is no least common multiple. The least common multiple can be considered as 1 for both of them, 14 and 15, right? So this takes the time we go of y. We go of y is the time that it takes for completing this problem in this approach. If we follow the approach of problem reduction, how it can be calculated? Means in this problem reduction method, we are going to reduce the problem into another problem, which is nothing but calculation of GCD. After calculating the GCD, the LCM can be calculated as x into y by GCD. Simply by doing this, I can get the common multiple of least common multiple of x and y. This can be completed within the time of big O of log minimum of y. But earlier we use big O of y time that takes. Big O of y time it takes. Y is the largest value. But here it takes big O of log of minimum of x, y. 
So if it, uh, here it takes the biggest value, but here it takes the smallest value, minimum of x and y. So here log of x it becomes a right. So I hope that you all understood the, how the problem reduction reduces the time complexity by considering this shortest path example and LCM example, right? So here this is one of the techniques used in transform and conquer for transforming the problem into simpler problems, smaller problems, right? So I hope that you all understood this topic. So thank you for listening to the session. Thank you.